Okay, we now welcome on another special guest. It is the newest player for Racing Louisville City and former UNC player. It's Taylor Otto. Thanks for coming on today, Taylor. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. All right, so before we get into the interview portion, we usually start out with some quick hitting questions, which is like rapid fire, one or two quick answers. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. All right, what was your major in college? Uh, sports admin. If you were on a six hour plane ride and had the middle seat and you could pick who you sat next to, who would you pick? They could be dead or alive. Uh, LeBron James and my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's like the least favorite music that you like to hear before a game? Country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you like your eggs cooked? Uh, depends on the day. What's your favorite cleat that you've ever worn? Um, I like the super flies. Uh, what is your spirit am animal? A cat. Do you have a routine that you follow every single day when you wake up? Um, uh, not really. No. Yeah, me too. I kind of just roll out of bed. Get up, start my yes. day. <laughs> all right, like that's all I got for the. Yeah, exactly. Especially <laughs> I'm on vacation. Uh oh, wait. Well, are you on spring break this week? By the way, or are you Actually, just no? Uh oh, um, we didn't get a spring break. Um, but so my question is, why LeBron James? Yeah, why not Michael Jordan? <laughs> well, I also like Michael Jordan because you know, go heels. But um, I'm from Cleveland. I was born there and he won the Cavs a championship and I just like grew up watching him when I was in Cleveland so he's always been a player I've looked up to so yeah you're kind of in both camps there you got the UNC thing for Jordan and then the Cleveland LeBron yeah I got both of them <laughs> is, is Michael Jordan around like the uh, UNC campus at all ever uh he was at like two games uh, while I was in college so like not that often but like he'll come to games every once in a while uh-huh that's really cool yeah i can't even imagine um so right. i guess kind of kick it off then um you just got drafted not too long ago can you kind of take us through that experience of being drafted like what were your initial reactions um it was like kind of a weird experience just because of covid and so it was like all like online and like through TV. Um, so I was just like in the living room with my parents. Like it was really chill, which was kind of nice. Like I was obviously really nervous and I like wanted to get drafted. So um, it was awesome. I'm so grateful that I did get drafted and that I have the opportunity to play the sport I love for my job. So it was, it was really exciting and I was glad I could have my parents there for that experience. Were you, so you went 11th overall, were you kind of expecting to go 11th or like going into it? Did you kind of have an yeah. idea of when you were going to go or was it anything could have happened that day? Um, I think I kind of had like a general idea, but like, it's tough. Like draft day, I feel like anything happens. Like there's not like plans change a lot just because of like what other teams pick and stuff like that. So I kind of had a general idea, but I kind of also had absolutely no idea where I was going or if I was going to get drafted. So I was definitely a little nervous. <laughs> and you're in Louisville now. How has kind of the adjustment period been for you to kind of take the, the next step in your career to the pro level? Um, it's been really, really good, actually. Uh, I've, I've actually have like three or four of my teammates from UNC here, too. So it's been nice to be around people that like I'm comfortable with and have played with before, which I think has been really helpful for me. And then um, it's just like a new environment all around. And so I think everyone's had the opportunity to kind of like start from scratch and really prove themselves. But I think is a cool opportunity. So I think a lazy podcast would ask who's your best friend on the team. So I'm going to ask who's like low key best friend that you've kind of made. Um, there's a girl named Neely who used to play at Alabama, who has been here that I met, who's like low key kind of become one of my really, really good friends. So it's been cool. It's always cool meeting new people. 
So you kind of close then. You said three or four players from UNC are there. Are you guys pretty tight then? Yeah, I mean, actually, like the people that ended up coming were people that I was really good friends with at school too. So it, was, it worked out really well. Like one of them is my roommate, Julia Ashley. So it was it was nice that it worked out that way. And now you're coming from probably one of the most winningest programs in all of college sports to Louisville. Uh, kind of like, what are you doing to bring that winning culture to Louisville too? And and because uh, you have a bunch of your teammates there with you too. Is there anything that you guys are trying to bring from UNC into Louisville? Yeah, I think like for us, like we just came from an environment that's very, very competitive and training every day and just trying to push the limits every day, trying to be as best as we can and improve something in our game every day. And I think we're just trying to do that here as well and set a, set a standard. Um, so for us, like that's what we've been trying to do. And also like, this is a new environment and it gives everyone an opportunity to kind of step up and be leaders and try to like do as much as we can to show who we are and all those types of things. So I think that it's really cool that we have a young team and we kind of can bring things that we've learned from college into this environment. Whereas like with other NWSL teams, they're kind of, they're older and they have people that have already established that. So I think it's a unique situation for us. Yeah, I think so too. Cause it's, I mean, this is their first year. Is it, weird than moving from one level to the next like is it is the adjustment the same like because it's a new team there aren't really like roles developed already so they're kind of yeah. developing as they go yeah I think it's tough like I obviously was never in another NWSL situation so I don't really fully know what another environment would have been like but I think like they've done a good job here and I think that we have a lot of young players and I think it is really cool to allow those young players like kind of have those roles at a younger age. And I think it can be really helpful for a lot of us in our career path, like down the road. So honestly, for me, I think it worked out the best. And I think it's awesome that we kind of have been put in this situation to kind of grow up a little, a little bit faster and get into those roles a little bit quicker. Whereas some NWSL teams, you might not get into that spot as quick. So do you see yourself kind of taking up a leadership role right off the bat with, with the team? Because um, Anson Dorson, uh, kind of Doran, sorry, really had a lot of praise for you as a player, but also as a leader. Do you feel like that's one of your strengths uh, as a player is your leadership ability? Yeah, I do think it is one of my strengths. I, I'm, I'm kind of like more of a quiet person, like when I first get around people. Um, so I wouldn't say like I would be like a leader or like the person that like people turn to at the moment or like even in the next few years. I think I just try to like be there for my teammates and like have a positive attitude on the field and try to just keep things going. And I think that's where eventually like people kind of feel more comfortable around me and like have like a little bit more trust in me. And I think that's where like Anson saw that leadership role in me. Um, so I definitely think if that were to be the case, it would be a few years down the road, but obviously if it presented itself, like I would do whatever I can to try to take that role as well as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely want to talk about Anson, but before we get to that, I'm just more curious about Louisville as a city, like, is there a pretty big culture of soccer there? I mean, from what I've seen, it looks like it's awesome. The stadium's awesome. Like the guys have done really well. They've had huge crowds. So it seems like there's a huge following and a lot of people have bought tickets, which is awesome. Um, but I mean, we haven't had a game yet. We haven't had a lot of opportunities to like be around the community just because of COVID and the things going on in the world right now. So. From what I've heard, yes, and I'm excited about it. Yeah. So when, for, when for, is your first game? Uh, April 10th. We play Orlando. So soon. Oh. Very soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Orlando. There. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Um. Yeah. But oh, I just lost my thought. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah. What are your kind of expectations then going into that first game? Like first um, professional I'm game, you know. Obviously, like we want to win, of course, um, that's always expectation. But I think for us, like we're just trying to kind of make a name for ourselves, um, show people like how we want to play and execute it well in our first game and just like make a mark in our first game. And I think that's the biggest thing is make sure people know that like we're in this league and we want to compete and we can compete with all these teams. And I think that's the biggest thing for the first game. Do you think you could uh, have a starting role in that first game or is it still a lot up in the air? A lot of another week and a half of training still before then, right? Yeah. I mean, like, you never know. 
I would hope so. But also I've had a few like injuries here and there that I'm trying to get over right now. So I might not be able to participate in the first game or maybe the second one, who knows, but hopefully. Um, but yeah, that's always the goal. So hopefully. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I mean, like we kind of touched on already with Anson, he had a lot of high praise for you as a player and then as a leader as well. How would you kind of describe his leadership style? Um, Anson is a really unique guy. It's kind of hard to like explain. Yeah. Is he um, intimidating? No, Anson's like, <laughs> he can literally talk with anyone about literally anything. He's so intelligent, like knows stuff about everything. <laughs> But he, I think what makes him so effective is that he's like had so many life experiences and he's so good at connecting with people and so good at communicating with people and just like being engaged and making them feel important and making them feel like what they're talking about is important and what they're doing is important and um, their role is important. And I think that's what makes him such a good leader. And he obviously knows what he's talking about in the realm of soccer. So no, yeah, he's a he's a great guy. He's a great coach. And I think because he's such a great guy outside of soccer, that's why people have so much respect for him on the field. So would you say that he's more of like a player's coach in that sense where he's like really good at player management and that type of thing more so than like the tactical side of the game? Or is it a good balance between the two? It's definitely a good balance. They also have um, Damon there now, Damon Nahas. And he's kind of taken more of the like soccer role and like the tactical role and all those things. And I think Anson's kind of been more of like the managing side and like talking to players and just like meeting with them and telling them what they need to get better at, and what they're doing well and where they want to go and stuff like that. So he definitely has both for sure. But like, as the years have gone on, he's kind of gone more towards like building people's character, um, just telling people what they need to do to get to where they want to go and stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, I saw that he had for the team I don't know if this, can you confirm this? There's a 28 category competition thing and you post rankings and it's all on a public bulletin board. Yeah, he does. <laughs> is, is, can that get kind of, can that get kind of toxic then with that? Uh, or? It's definitely like a tough environment. Like it's not for everyone. You, you have to be really, you kind of have to be able to be like, okay, yeah, like I need this. Like the competition does build like, great players and does push you to like different limits but sometimes it can be like ah oh, like I'm at the bottom of this list like I don't feel like I'm that bad but I mean it's very mental like you just have to be like mentally strong you have to be confident in who you are and be like okay like I'm not good at that like I need to get better at it and yeah. that's where I think like people can struggle and like I think everyone struggles you just kind of have to be like okay like how do I want to go about this mm -hmm. and I think that's what what's cool about you and see it's like you get to decide like how good you want to be you get to decide if you want to look at what you're not good at, if you want to just ignore it, or if you want to attack it head on. So I think it can be very difficult. Um, it's, it's the competitive cauldron is what he calls it. It can be very difficult, but it does get you to another level. 100%. Yeah. What type of the 28 is a lot of categories. Like what are some of like the main categories that you can remember from, from that, that list? Um, so they do like, um, they do like finishing, they do like passing, they do crossing and finishing, heading. Um, and then like every day in training, you know how like they do drafts? Yeah. Like they put like when you were drafted, like by your teammates and like they oh, like do like, yeah, like, I mean, they put, they literally put everything on it. Like everything you do in training, like our manager, Tom is like on the sideline, like writing down stats. And then they have managers that like are also writing down stats so like I mean obviously it's not always perfect because like it is like hand done but it is very like everything you do is recorded 100% what's the most rankings that you were top of at one time while you were at UNC oh I don't know sometimes I didn't look at it <laughs> it made me feel bad <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know like I definitely was like at the top sometimes like overall and then sometimes I was more towards like fifth or sixth and I mean it's tough there's a lot of great players at Carolina so you're not wow. usually at the top of everyone you're usually at the top of like maybe like three or four yeah, yeah. um in that same article it's, he said that if you're in the top three three or four of his um list or his like players 
Uh-huh. They usually go on and end up playing for the national team one day. I mean, you already have experience with like the youth team. And in the thing he said, you're one, we're one of his top three. So does that mean we're going to expect the Taylor Auto uh, call up on the senior team for the Olympics this summer? Oh, I don't know about this summer, <laughs> but <laughs> definitely Soon. the end goal is to be there. The end goal is to 100% be there. That's why, not why I play, I love to play soccer, but it's definitely like my goal. It's what I want to do and it's where I want to be just like a ton of other players. So, I mean, hopefully one day. Yeah. So does he yeah. have a lot of like insight then? Cause he's brought a lot of players through the ranks. Does he have, give you a lot of insight on kind of what beside like what, what it takes to actually get there then? I mean, I'm sure he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. He like, this is a great thing about Anson. Like you can go into his office. Like I'm not kidding. Like any time of the day, and he'll like sit there and have an hour conversation with you. And like, you could be like really upset and like crying and he'll just be like, okay, well, what do you want to do about it? And like, or you could be like really happy and be like, this is what I'm doing. He's like, this is great. Like, I'm going to tell everyone this is what we need to do. And so like, anytime you go in there, he'll tell you like other players that have been in your spot, other players that have done stuff that have gotten them out of that spot or have gotten them to where you want to be. And I think it is really cool that he has like witnessed like so many players that maybe also might not have been like seen as someone who can make it to the national team and also players that have been in the national team and have been there for a very long time and their journeys to get there. Like, it's really just the choice to him. And like, he really believes that like, if you want to do that, like you have to put the work in and you have to do everything you can to get there. Do you think he has any pull getting uh, players called up? Because I have, we have a stat here that says one third (laughs) of all players that have won the world cup with the U S have been coached by Anson at some point. Uh, which is kind of insane I don't know if he would have a poll but like it, it's just tough like I mean it's a great environment like a lot of good players go there and a lot of people compete there so like there are a lot of good players there and so that's where they do look I feel like but there's also a lot of other schools like that now so I would say maybe in the past a little bit more um there's a lot of good players and a lot of good schools now so I don't know. People respect Anson, so of course they're going to listen to him, but you never know. Yeah. So are there any habits then that you kind of picked up while, like, from your time at UNC that you necessarily didn't have before and then just to kind of be at that top level? Um, I don't know if it's really a habit, but, like, UNC is, like, <laughs> really kind of go with the flow, not the most organized – place in the world for women's soccer like we really just like no no one wears the same thing to training like relate to a lot of things like but we always get it done like we roll with the flow and like we're still like one of the best and like we always compete and I think like something I learned there is to just like roll with it and like be adaptable to any situation and just kind of like get after it no matter where you are what you're doing and I think that is really really a good tool to have that's interesting. I would expect the the opposite when you think of such like a historically winning program. <laughs> I would literally think I the total opposite. I know. I literally everyone says the same thing. And like when I got there, I was kind of like, oh, like, is this like how it is? Like, <laughs> like everyone's like, yeah, like it's great. I promise. And like it really is. Like you're an adult. Like there's no rules. Like you get to choose. Like if you want to show up and try every day, you get to choose if you want to like, you know, do what you got to do in college or if you want to just focus on soccer. Or if you don't want to focus on soccer and you don't want to, and just like anything like that, you get to choose. So I think that's really cool that you get to be an adult and you get to do those things for yourself there. The only mandatory thing is winning, right? Yeah, seriously. Like (laughs) winning and being a good person. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So now with uh, racing Louisville, you said, yeah, like we said, three or four players. Are you guys like bringing anything particular from the UNC program or their like recipe for success and bringing implementing that at Louisville? Um, I just think for us, like we're really like every day we go to training, like we want it to be like really, really, really good and efficient and also like make sure we get something out of it and make sure that like we are doing something that is going to help us with something in our game every day. And I think that aligns with Christy and like what he's trying to do here. Um, so 
I think Christy's already done a good job of bringing that and we're just trying to like uphold that and keep that here as well, as well as all the other players that are here too. So kind of switching topics, um, you said you're nursing a little injury right now. Is that, mm -hmm. you've had quite a few substantial injuries <laughs> in your career. Uh, Is that two torn ACLs and a torn meniscus? Um, do you feel like those made you stronger as a person to get through and kind of get to where you are? Or I don't know, I guess yeah. that's, that's really tough. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everyone goes through injuries in sport. I mean, unfortunately I had like quite a few with my knee. Um, for me, I think that the injury really did help me in ways that like I realize now, like I just like love to play so much now. And like, I love to train so much and I don't take it for granted as much as I maybe would have had I not gotten injured. And obviously no one wants to get hurt, but like 100%, it does make you so much more grateful. And it also makes you work that much harder. And it makes you realize like how much you need to do and how much you really do want to play. And it really did make me realize like, this is what I want to do for a living. Like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life as long as I can and be a part of it. So I definitely think more positive has come from injury than negative for sure. Yeah. I mean, and then, so the one, I think it was your meniscus that you had it was right before the world cup and you chose to have it removed rather yeah. than have a surgery. What, what kind of went into that decision? So I was at camp and we had like maybe like a month and a half, two months before we were leaving to go. Actually, it might've been like a little longer, maybe like three months, but in six weeks, seven weeks, we were going to have another, like right before we were leaving camp and we were going to play three teams. And, um, I ended up tearing my meniscus and also like it flipped. So like, I couldn't bend my knee at all like it got like caught and so the doctors were basically like okay like we can repair it which is what they wanted to do they wanted to repair it and um they were like but we could also remove it and it would be way quicker recovery so if they were going to repair it it was going to be three to four months and if they were going to take it out it was going to be four to six weeks and obviously like at that age I was like yeah like no take it out <laughs> like I want to go to the world cup like I'm about to go like please take it out like I can't not go and my doctor was kind of like Taylor like this might not be the best idea like you might have some issues down the road like but like I'll I'll make the decision like when you're in surgery like if it if I can take it out I'll take it out and if I have to repair it I have to repair it so I didn't know going into surgery what they were going to do like he was going to decide in surgery and then I got out and he removed it and it was good. Like I was able to play and I was able to go to the world cup and it was awesome. And I'm so, I'm so glad I did that. So yeah, it's, it's, it was crazy, crazy yeah, timing. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious. What are like the, what is the downside of removing it? Like, what, is it something down the line or is it something that you're kind of dealing with now or what, what, what's like the consequence? Yeah. So I definitely have, so I had another surgery like a year and a half ago because a piece of bone chipped off and was like in my knee, like roaming around and it would get caught sometimes. Did you so feel had, it just like in your knee? Well, or? yeah. So sometimes when it would get caught, like I couldn't bend my knee. Oh. So like oh. I, I had to get it removed because like I couldn't obviously do what I wanted to do. Um, but so like when they remove the meniscus, the medial meniscus, it's basically like bone on bone now. So like I have like some issues like with like single leg squatting. Like it's like it just like is really painful just because it is bone on bone. Um but just like minimal things. And then obviously like I do get like pain after I play sometimes, but I mean, it's not anything that's not manageable. So it is what it is. Like, I feel like everyone has their little pains. Yeah. 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 And it was definitely worth it. Right. Cause you, when you played every minute of every single game at the world cup and you guys made it to the semifinals, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. It was like literally the best experience. I, I loved it. And I'm so glad I went and I'm so grateful. I went like, it, it was awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like um, with recovering from injuries, a lot of it is just um, mental, right? Yeah, I like 100% agree. Like when I tell people who are like going through the same thing that I've gone through or like even other injuries that take a long time, like you just have to like believe in yourself and you have to like take every day at a time and be like, okay, this is what I got to do. This is what 
I need to do tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And then this is when I'm going to start doing this and this. And then you just get over those little, the little hurdles. And then once you're back, like you just have to trust yourself and you have to trust the work that you put in to get back there. And I think that sometimes when people struggle coming back from injury, it is very mental and they don't trust themselves. And it's totally understandable. Like you're out for six months, seven months, eight months, and you come back and you're like, okay, like, am I just supposed to like do what I did before? Like, that's not realistic. Like you have to get back into it. Was there ever a time where you felt like you were going to quit or was, did you ever get close or was it always like your head down grind and get done and let's play again? Um, no, I never wanted to quit. Like I, I just like, don't want to do anything else. (laughs) So I was just like, okay, like, what do I need to do this time? Like, let's get it done. (laughs) Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find pretty interesting of, for like mental, the mental aspect, like this is our 40th episode and a lot of people, that we've had on have emphasized how important the mental part is Mm -hmm. of the game. But I feel like there's not that much attention that's paid to it or as much as it should be. Like you think about it, you have like strength coaches and all that. I guess, I don't know. Many people have like, um, like, I don't don't know. A psychologist. Yeah. Psychologist. Yeah. 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 And I think like too, like people like don't always realize with athletes, like, especially like being professional and in college athletes, like, that like kind of is your world and like you, all you want to do is play and then like, when you can't do that like that's kind of all you think about in a weird way and it's just like you go to rehab and it's like okay that's all I can do like sometimes like you can't do anything other than like stretch or like ride a bike or like little things and like people don't realize sometimes that like athletes definitely correlate like who they are as a person with like how they are on the field or like what they are doing like in the sport and obviously like it's not true like you have to remind yourself that but it can become very difficult like when you've been removed from the game for a very long time did you guys have a sports psychologist at unc and or do you have one now at at louisville yeah we had one at unc and she was like great like you would go in there and you just be like okay wow that was great i needed to talk to them (laughs) and then like we do have one here. I think tomorrow is like the first day that like we're being introduced to them, which is awesome that they are giving us that opportunity to talk to someone. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's great because sometimes also like the only people you're talking to about it is your teammates. And like a lot of times they're playing. And so like, it is hard for them to like fully like understand what you're going through and like, it isn't fair to expect them to understand what you're going to and expect them to be like upset with you and like going through what you're going through. So it's nice to talk to someone that's removed sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so now looking forward, forward to, to the 2021 season, who, what team or what player are you most excited to play against? Um, I am like definitely excited to play against the courage just because like Carolina team and then also like they've been very good in the league and then also like Portland has like a lot of like really cool players like Crystal Dunn and Lindsey Horan and stuff and I just think it's really cool to play against like people I've been watching my whole life so yeah I I think that'll be cool. Do you know who's your idol? Yeah. Um, or who's someone you like model your game after I'll say I wouldn't like say model my game after her but like I do really like how Crystal Dunn like can be put in any position and like destroy it (laughs) and like she's so like humble about it she's just kind of like doing her thing like doesn't get as much recognition as she should um so yeah I think stuff like that is cool and then I I think Rose, Rose Lavelle has been like incredible the last two years to watch and like the thing she does on the ball as well as the Binia, like she's insane like there's so many like there's so many in this league like Denise O'Sullivan great player like there's so many players mm-hmm. I was gonna ask um off the top of your head do you know how many of your former teammates are in the NWSL right now uh that's hard there's a lot of like, people yeah I was going to say, because, like, from the national team, too. But I'm thinking, like, UNC specifically. UNC specifically that I played with. Yeah. Because I mean, there's a lot of Tar Heels, like, still in the yeah. league. But um, I know there's three here. There's Bridget, Lindsay. 
Um, Abby, I think maybe like seven or eight that I played with. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so are you looking forward to like, are you more looking forward to playing those teams with those players on it? Or is it more um, of the older players that you've been watching for a while? Um, I think it, I think it's more like the people that like I played with. Like, I think it's really cool to see the people that you were with for years, like kind of go to the next level with you and like see them live out their dream too. And then like kind of get after it on the other side of it. Like, I think that's like really fun to do. Um, yeah, I think it'll, it'll be really cool to play against people that I, I played with for a long time. And I think it'll also be really cool to play against players that I haven't gotten to play with for a really long time. Like the ones I played with the twenties and through the national team when I was younger. So I think that'll be fun too. Yeah. What, how long is the season? Like how many games total? I don't know off the top of my head. Honestly, like we haven't gotten a full schedule yet. Like we just have our challenge cup schedule. So like we just have our first four games uh -huh. that are scheduled right now. So I'm not really sure how many games we play, but I do know that it's an eight month season, which is very long. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That is pretty long actually. Yeah. Very long season this year. So, but I mean, honestly, like it's really nice because I feel like last year the NW Cell didn't get to play a lot just because of COVID. So yeah. it's cool that they they are doing a lot this year with teams. Yeah. They were the first league back though, I'm pretty sure, in all of sports. They were, yeah. And they like didn't have any positive tests at all. So yeah, yeah it's crazy. A lot of other sports can't relate with the no positive test thing. Yeah, they must have done a good job with their bubble. <laughs> yeah, they did a really, really good job with it for sure. So, and, that, and it was an awesome challenge cup to watch. So, the MLS was horrible with it. At least the first go around, they were horrible with it. I yeah. know. The MLS definitely had some growing pains with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah. tournament they had. Well, yeah. I think, well, FC Dallas didn't even play. They had like 15 or 16 cases or something crazy. I but, know. It's oh yeah we had uh so do you know johnny nelson he went to unc do you know him yeah i do know johnny nelson yeah 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 he said he was he said it was a disaster <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's hilarious I, yeah my boyfriend actually plays in the mls and like he was just like oh gosh we don't even know when we're gonna play or not because like <laughs> the day before a game it was just like oh you guys aren't playing anymore yeah yeah so Oh yeah, I forgot that your boyfriend is uh and he played in, he on played for the uh U23 team that unfortunately yeah, lost. He did, unfortunately. What yeah. what would you have to say to him after that? I mean, there's not really much to <laughs> did you, say. Did you like, yell at him? No, 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 never that. <laughs> Support system. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a bummer, but I, I'm happy for him. He's, he's doing great things right now. So yeah, good experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Exciting yeah. Stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, I think so, we're going to wrap it up then. I got one more, actually. Yeah. Is it tough? Because um, you, you live in Louisville, and I forget which MLS team he plays for. He plays for the Fire, Chicago. Yeah, so you guys are, like, a little far apart. Is that kind of hard to manage? Like yeah, you guys probably I, can't see each other very often at all. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, like, I saw him every day for, like, four years. Um, but – it's really not that far and like we're doing our own thing like he's playing I'm playing like he can watch his games like he can hopefully watch mine and so I mean it's cool like we're both doing the same thing like we get to talk a lot um it's definitely tough but like we both have our dreams we have the things we want to do so it's it's cool to be with someone that kind of knows what you're going through it's a power couple <laughs> yeah something like that <laughs> so now too it's like before at UNC you were doing school and and mm -hmm. playing now you're just playing do you feel like you have more free time now yeah honestly like it's great like I I actually loved like school and like going to class and like seeing my friends and like learning but like I love like not having to take tests and like having to study and stuff and so now I feel like I can just like fully focus on soccer and like fully just like do what I need to do to like be prepared for everything, which is awesome. So yeah, yeah. I really, really do like it. What What is there to do in Louisville? Like what, what have you been, have you been exploring the city at all? Um, not really. There's a lot of coffee shops here. Um, there's some pretty good food. 
Yeah, is there anything but, like it's known for for food? Like, I don't know. Like, I think they have like a few barbecue places that are really good that I have not been to yet. Um, mm. they have some good sushi that I've had. Um, the only thing that I've like seen a ton of is like bourbon. Bourbon. <laughs> So yeah, I feel like that might be what they're known for and like the Kentucky Derby and stuff. So. Yeah, was, yeah, that's, yeah, that makes sense. And then, I mean, Kentucky Fried Chicken, but is that even like based? I don't from know. Kentucky? Like I haven't really like heard anything about it, if I'm yeah. being honest, since I've been here, but I'm sure it is a thing for yeah. sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I've never been. I kind of want to, I want to, uh, we had another, we had a guy from the, uh, the USL team, uh, mm-hmm. John Louisville FC. Gomez, yeah. And I don't know. It seems, it seems like an interesting play. Like the Kentucky Derby seems like such a interesting event to go. It's to. like one day a year. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely is. So like, I don't know if you guys know Amina, I get but yeah. she was like drafted here, but she's from here and she went to Louisville and she like, is like, Oh my gosh, we have to go. Like, it's so cool. So like, I'll let you guys know if I ever yeah. go. <laughs> is, it, right. is that like everybody kind of like dresses up and then just like drinks a yeah, lot and bets a lot of money up. on like, horses? All these different events. Yeah, there's a lot, lot going on one day. Yeah. yeah. One of the schools I was thinking about going to uh, that I applied to was uh, Skidmore. It's up in – I forget the t- name of it, but they have uh, – uh, I think it's Saratoga New York. Springs. Yeah, it's up in New yeah. York, and they have like – a big like race it's like that's like what the town is known for so it's like yeah interesting. I don't know. yeah it's... very interesting for sure i i haven't really like gotten to see a lot of louisville but um it is i've heard a lot of good things about it so we'll have to see when everything opens up again yeah hopefully soon um yeah, summer hopefully soon. hopefully soon yeah well we're we're big louisville racing louisville fans now and louisville um, fc and Louisville, yeah, Louisville soccer. Yeah. We're big on Louisville. Oh. <laughs> We're a Louisville yeah. podcast. Um, yeah. So you guys we'll have, have to, to come see a game one day. Yeah. Yeah. 